Good morning. How are you doing? We'll start in a few minutes. So thanks for joining us this morning. Okay, we'll wait a few minutes for everybody to join us, okay? Good morning. <clears throat> Hi, Cynthia, how are you? Hi, Dr. Lynn, I'm good, how are you? Good, thanks for joining me this morning. We'll wait for everybody to get on. I wonder if I make innovation center team they forgot. <laughs> I don't know. Um, I, I work with them and I'm not sure what this happened. Yeah, so they they might be. So are you working there now? Uh, yeah. Oh, okay, that's awesome. Okay. So let's wait. Maybe Jason and team, the gang will join soon. Okay. I ha yeah, I haven't heard from them, so. Nope. Nope. <laughs> okay, let's see what we're doing. Session three. And then I think we didn't share out last time, so. No, it's eight o'clock. Uh, session three. Okay, so I think we had um, we were using Miro last time. Morning. Hi, how are you? Good, how you doing? <laughs> okay. I thought you were on vacation. <laughs> Me? Oh. <laughs> 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 yeah, how's your team doing? Good? Good. Yeah, so we got Alex this morning and Cynthia. We're just waiting. Let's wait a couple more minutes. Maybe people are joining on. It's early in the morning. Um, I don't have anybody from Iraq yet. So MVC keeps you busy there. Oh yeah. So are you gonna get the vaccine? I saw the email coming through. Um, oh, I already got mine. Oh, you did? Good for yeah. You. Yep. I got my second one just recently too. Oh, awesome. How did how did you feel after that one? Mm, I was a little worried about the second one. Uh, each one uh, sore arm and uh, just kind of uncomfortable, you know, the, kind of mm. at that injection area. But that was pretty much it. No fever or anything when I got it. I heard some people got it some fevers afterwards but oh i was good okay well i finally got the appointment <laughs> for the first one yeah um, i had a hard time finding this getting the second one done because they said the county was supposed to contact us no one ever did and we reached out kind of got the run around then we had to find one that offered the shot we because you have to get the same shot it's got to be the same company yeah yeah 
was, like there was seemed like there was a shortage that week when I, we were supposed to go. So it was a little bit while after that before we got the other one. <clears throat> so in Virginia, they were telling me that they start doing Johnson Johnson. So it's a one shot, right? From what I heard. Um, but well, it looks like I'm gonna get a Pfizer. So <laughs> that's what I got, <laughs> Pfizer, right? Yeah. Good morning, Jerry and Joe. How are you? I'm all right. Morning. Hit the gym early this morning at six. So I'm, I'm wide awake. Uh, <laughs> morning, <what>? warrior. <laughs> yeah. Good morning. It, it's easy because my wife goes to, I got drop her off at five. And so uh, I'm already up. And so uh, the gym opens up at six. So I go at that time. Well, it looks like we got the gang here. Thank you for joining me this morning. I felt a little lonely this morning. I was like, what happened to everybody? <laughs> I can make uh, an extra coffee. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you for joining me. So this is session three. Um, we have one more after this one because we weren't able to do the last one. Um, I was in Virginia bright and early. Um, we had a huge ceremony for my grandmother for two days. So yeah, she, you know, it's always interesting that they cremate them right then. And it's so fast and crazy, but anyway, um, you know, yeah. So, all right, I'm gonna go ahead and get started with our warm up exercise. So we're gonna do a little warm up exercise. I'll put the question also in the chat. Um, the question is, what is your favorite food? Mm. Okay. That's so, <laughs> well, you, you can choose and it could be a cultural response or not, okay? So anybody wants to get started with what is your favorite food? I know that Donnell probably knows this, but you know, I, well, I have a few too. Um, I love pizza, um, but especially New York pizza because it's a little bit closer to my heart. When I was younger, I used to live over there and uh, not in New York, but in New Jersey. And so um, pizza is always so delicious in the East Coast. And then I tell my students all the time, if I can eat tacos three days out of the week, I would. Um, and since we moved to California, that is my favorite food. Oh, Jason put down that double cheeseburger from In-N-Out. Yes. That was a <laughs> tough choice. Double. That'd be that'd be up there. <laughs> the double double. It goes back to my bias working there when I was in college. Yeah. So <laughs> I used Alex to get free said, ones. <laughs> yeah. So the double double is always so good, but that's. In and out is a California thing, I think. Yeah. Um, yeah, that that is one of mine too. Alex said pasta, my any kind of pasta, all kinds of pasta. I agree. I think pasta is pretty good. That's also like, you know, in the East Coast, they love pasta too. Um, have you tried making your own pasta? Like, you know, from scratch? And Jerry chicken green brazil yeah that's good too <laughs> paella oh, okay i haven't i haven't learned how to make that um i've only had it at a few places so paella is also looks so good um anything else jamaican oxtail hmm i've had the southern oxtail i want i've never had the jamaican one so you got to share how that is like. How is that like, NK? For me, I think it's just the spices. Um, I grew up with like a Nigerian palate, I guess. So mm -hmm. spices are big in our family. And I guess that's probably the closest thing to the spices of Nigeria. So, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, so... Um, you know, whenever I can, when I visit other states and if they have like, you know, Southern food, I love to try it. And I've tried that. I've tried the oxtail 
the salad style. So yeah, they do put more seasoning. Um, and we love spice. Um, Asian culture loves spice. <laughs> I used to eat more spice when I was younger, um, especially Thai food, right? Um, if you like enjoy Thai food, that's delicious as well. But my our common go-to for my family for whenever we have Christmas, Thanksgiving, whatever holiday it is, it doesn't matter which holiday it is, we always have egg rolls. <laughs> um, because it's finger food, it's easy to eat, but the proper way to eat egg rolls in the Vietnamese culture is to put it in lettuce, wrap it and dip it. Um, you know, so, but here people eat egg rolls as an appetizer, but you can make it with a meal. Um, yeah, Thai food is good too. Um, Melissa, anybody want to share your favorite food? Fish tacos, Cynthia? Yeah. So that kind of remind me about San Diego. Um, I lived there for a while and there used to be a food truck that comes I used to live on the east side of San Diego, which is um, near the former um, Chargers Stadium. <laughs> um, and there would be a food truck that comes on the weekends and they sell the best seafood, anything. So um, you got siete mares, you got uh, fish tacos. Yeah, El Pasar tacos is good too, but that reminds me of San Diego whenever I hear fish tacos. Donnell, you wanna share your favorite food? Maybe his tacos second. Yeah, I agree, me too. I think living in Southern California, that's usually is one of those. Um, street tacos is good here. Um, I think way back, I remember when I was younger, the closest that we had to Mexican food was fast food. Um, they were not, but I think now the East Coast have more restaurants and more even street vendor that sells um, Mexican food that's good there. So I was in Virginia and they had quite a few Mexican restaurants that's popping up everywhere. And it wasn't like that when I was there years ago. So very interesting. Jeff, you want to share, share what your favorite food is this morning or your favorite food ever? I think Jeff just joined us. No? Okay. Well, um, what I'll do is, I guess I'll go into screen share and we can take a look at what we were working on last time. Um, and then what, what we'll do is we'll continue on that and we can discuss what we want to do for our sustainable solutions. Um, and the task for today is to work together and kind of um, looking at how we can write out a problem statement based on what we came up with last time. Okay, so I'll share screen real quick. Um, so, sorry, hold on. Let me look at the mind map. So we were looking at the Miro and I think quite a few of you were in different teams. So if you were not participating in the prior, in the second session, um, what you can, add your ideas and stuff into the, the team boards. Okay, so let me minimize everyone. Okay, so I think this is um, the board from team one. And um, actually, let me share this to everybody. So in case you wanted to join. Sorry, I'm kind of new to Miro as well. Oh, 
Okay, so anybody want to talk from team one mind map, if you recall from last time? So there was some ideas about 3D printing um, the water filter. Um, and then from there, moving into 3D modeling. Go ahead. I'm going to let Cynthia talk. Uh, I know we had Patrick too, and he's not here. Cynthia, do you want to share a little bit about our 3D uh, printing, kind of our flowchart here? Uh, sure. I, let me just go to comments. Okay, um, so when we were uh, creating the map, we were just thinking of ideas um, um, on what we wanted to create, and we ended up going with the water filter, um, and then we wanted to 3D print our printer, I mean 3D print our water filter, so we were, uh, we were thinking of a, uh, materials um, which would be environmentally friendly. Um, and there was um, some materials that um, I believe uh, Abraham was talking about. Uh, and it was right here. Oh, right here. So um, the Just Safe uh, Filament material, which is AES, PLA. Um, we also talked about even possibly, because um, there are some material that um, if they're using the water filter, we don't want them to uh, get, uh, for example, any poisoning or anything. Um, so we just wanted to make it as safe as possible. Um, we also wanted to make sure that the water filter was durable. Um, so just coming up with ideas for us to be able to reuse it. Um, I know I uh, there was also something I couldn't add any more, but we want. I also um, was wondering what type of does the design of the water filter and how exactly was it going to look like. Um, just looking into what are some materials that um, that uh, Milwaukee residents use in order to uh, gather their water um, resources in some in some of the areas. So um, do they use buckets, do they use gallons, or what's something that they use so that way we can um, be able to design multiple water filters without having um, to remake multiple designs. Mm -hmm. um, and then we were also talking about the total costs. Um, and that was pretty much it. So it's good to start thinking, it's good that you mentioned that we wanted to think about some of the different area that's going to be using this, right? Um, in, the, in the case where if we're looking at certain region, what, what type of container that they're going to be using? What do they have access to? So accessibility um, is something that we need to think about because if we design something that they don't use then it won't be feasible right mm -hmm. um so yeah it's a good maybe maybe if, if if you think about a way that we can implement something for buckets because a lot of the time um, in some rural area they might have a, a a center or location where they would be able to obtain water and then be able to bring that water to their home instead of having irrigation into their home. Um, and then in the city, you might have direct irrigation into the home, but then at the same time, they don't have, they, you know, they might use like bottles or cups or things like that on the smaller scale as it would be directly to the home. Anybody else wanted to add to this? Okay. so. The, the, the thing that we can think about with the maker space or I make innovation center is that we wanted to, there's something here that you guys put um, for percentage of print failure and success, um, compatibility with 3D printers. So what we can do is we can think about the design and then after that, we will move forward into agreeing on what we wanted to, to do. Um, you know, you can do many or a few as a group, 
we don't have to agree on one complete design. We can agree on a few design and then be able to test those design. But then also think about the time that it would take to print, um, you know, to prototype your filter. Because if you're looking at a larger type of container, the print will take a little longer, right? Compared to something that's smaller. Um, so if you, if you want to work on something that will be larger, think about the time that it would take to prototype. And then, um, you know, as time is a resource, we wanted to incorporate that as, as in something that we have to work and wait as a group. Okay, anything else you guys wanted to add to this or? Yeah, I was gonna say maybe other people from the other group could contribute to ours or give some suggestions, things we're missing, or I think we okay. had Abraham in our group, Jerry, um, Cynthia, Patrick. So um, I don't recall Joe, if Jeffrey was here. Joe, yeah, Joe was in a different group. I don't think Jeffrey yeah. was here last. NK, were you in the other group? I can't yes, she Melissa was. Melissa R. Mm -hmm. Do you guys have some suggestions for this group? Uh, yeah, um, our main focus though for the group we were in were um, isolating the problem that we saw the most. So we were between, um, what is it access to water or maybe it's um, there's water around, but they, or there's no water around. So you have to find the access and then create um, something to get to it. So ours, we kind of did like um, aqueducts or creating wells versus um, creating a system for extracting water. And then, um, then for the prototype for the actual filter, we talked about um, having something, a material that was strong enough to withstand fire so you could boil the water and then create natural filters using um, like sticks, leaves, rocks, like natural materials for people who might be in um, areas where they can't have access to um, more, I guess, expensive material. Mm -hmm. um, so that was kind of more where ours went, like isolating what's really needed um, for the different communities. Um, I believe Joe had pulled up um, kind of like a, an article type thing. A case um, for study, right? Yeah, for a specific area. We kind of went based off of that. So um, we were more so I still in the ideation phase rather than a the design for the actual water filter. But, um, we did and, talk about some of the materials, so like carbon and the ability to boil water and stuff like that. Okay. And, and I could add to that. Um, one thing, like even with that article um, and what just piggybacking on what uh, NK was saying earlier, um, and not to take away from anyone, but you know, we can make 3D printable items, but um, well, they still have access to water. Um, and so one of the things that we thought, like even going back to like the Romans, uh, one thing that they did, they didn't really have access to water. And so what they had to do was build aqueducts uh, to transfer, transfer that water from a distant area to where they was at. And so um, it's, it's really thinking about the context of the, of the region and what they're actually dealing with and trying to like address like different regions compared to like uh, one solve all solution. Mm -hmm. um, and so even like what NK was saying, like with, if, if they have natural materials around, like how can we use those natural materials to filter out the water uh, rather than trying to send them something that they're unfamiliar with um, and just use like what's around uh, to keep that sustainable rather than trying to print off items. So I think that we probably geographically have to determine an area that you wanted to really build your solution around, or if you can select a few areas that you wanted to address, right? Like looking at what, what, which area, what part of the world you wanted to be uh, providing your solution to. Um, and then that kind of narrowed down on how they're going to be able to access the resources for to be able to bring water to possibly their home or their community or their village or um, you know their location um, because 
if you're looking at rainfall, rainfall is different from one area to the other, right? Um, like I, when you were talking about the natural resources, rocks, sticks, and leaves, I was just thinking like the first thing that came to my mind was bamboo. In some area, they have access to bamboo and bamboo um, can be used in many different ways, right? It can be used to as a piping system to really bring water into a certain area and then also for filtering um, and, and so on. And, but in other areas where you don't have access to like bamboo and uh, things that would be naturally derived, then, um, you know, thinking about wells. Go ahead. No, no, I'm sorry. Oh, that's okay. Um, anything else team two want to add to this or share? And Casey, it looks like we got a, a few new participants that maybe weren't there uh, when we met last two weeks ago. So any suggestions you all have, if you weren't here the last time for the water filter design, considering the resources mm -hmm. to geography. So let me ask team two, when, when you put this together, um, what part, what region, what geographic area were you thinking of? Any idea? Uh, it was different regions. One, we looked at uh, Nigeria as one like case study. Mm -hmm. um, it was another Asian um, region. Uh, I can't remember exactly, but uh, I got the source from the actual uh, IREX or is what you share with us um, mm -hmm. when we first started. It was some of those files. Um, and so we are just looking at different regions. Um, another thing we found that's like, I think is above our pay grade is <laughs> it's like a political issue in a lot of these regions. Right. Um, that- Ownership. Yeah, like something that we may or may not be able to address uh, just because of what the, what, so even I've seen, I was sharing it with the team last week. I've seen some regions, I can't pinpoint the exact location, um, but the government pretty much um, abandoned any type of water filtration for that region. Um, and the, that, that area is highly reliant on water. Uh, they, they fish in that water. Um, the water, uh, like it's, um, it's, it's pretty much a combination of like sewer water and regular natural spring water. And so like they have went to the government from time to time to like address this, but the government pretty much said, uh, you're on your own. And like, they like sugarcoated it. Like when the press came and said, yes, we are doing something, but the underlying issue is that they really haven't thought about it or addressed um, water conservation or like clean water. And so that's another thing that we had, you know, we we were just thinking about or issues that we brought up when we were discussing last. Should, time. should we focus on where the university is located at, um, like that geographic area? And does anyone know? Because I'm just kind of looking at a map of of Iraq. Um, you know, it's pretty diverse with access on the south to to the Persian. Um, let me see here. Grab that Persian Gulf, and then you know, within kind of the central part with the the Tigris River um there's some inland lakes so definitely you know we should consider kind of the geographic extent and but I was just thinking maybe we tie it into where the university's at uh or the technical institute or it could be in Moreno Valley <laughs> because um yeah as as Joe was mentioning this right um there have been thoughts about how in California we always face drought and we always worry about water sources. Um, for a while, we were bringing in water from other states when we face bad droughts, right? There are years that we don't have as much rainfall. So those years, we usually limit water usage for outdoors, um, things like that. And then our lake and rivers dried up. So there have been time I remember growing up in California that I was told that um, for Orange County, there were times that Orange County were using water from Colorado um, because there were not enough water locally to really support the community. Um, so there have been discussion about 
um, using salt water, right? Um, filtering salt water and be able to do that um, for you know usage that would be for emergency, how we would be able to extract salt out of the water and be able to use that. Um, so when, when you were putting this together, did you think about that or was there? Yes, on there it say desalination. Yeah. Because uh, one country or one continent, Australia do not have a natural body of rock water. Um, it's surrounded by water, but there's no rivers, no lake or anything in mm -hmm. Australia. And so they're heavily reliant on desalination um, plants. Uh, they actually, I think they have three of them on the continent um, at this moment. And I think they was like talking about adding more, but that's a whole continent that's reliant on desalination plants. Um, it's been talked that it's expensive, um, but again, the whole continent is reliant on it. And I don't think Australia has as much money as America alone, uh, rather than North America as a, as a whole. Um, so it's still pushed against like, oh, it's too much water, but we should have the resources and the funds to take care of that if Australia can. And why. So, so that might be some, an area that we need to look at, right? Because in, mo in many locations, we have access to the ocean, but at the same time, we don't have a, pro a process that's affordable enough to, um, to um, be able to do the, to do the desalination. Um, so that might be something that you want to consider when you're putting together your problem statement. So Anna raised her hand. So I wanted to give over to Anna. Go ahead, Anna. Um, so I wasn't here last week. I'm sorry, I had like um, an exam. But um, coming off of what like Joe and, and Kay was saying and also you, because I was actually raised in an island um, called Palau. And um, growing up, we do face droughts and those stuff because living on an island, we don't really have like big... Um, lakes or like source of water basically we our main source of water is um groundwater but that's kind of hard because um everything is sand so usually the groundwater are salty <clears throat> but um other than that we use rainwater as um sources but like what you were saying there's droughts and those stuff and rainwater you know we don't get much rain here but like we live next to the sea and then we do use um, seawater. So like, like today they don't really use seawater, but um, long time ago, like my grandma usually tells stories that when there's no water, they'll use seawater and then they'll like leave it out for like several days so that- Evaporation. Yeah, evaporation mm -hmm. and the salt will separate from the water. So they'll get the salt to cook with and then mm -hmm. the water to drink. Other than that, they also use um, coconut filter. So mm -hmm. um, I don't know if you guys are really familiar, but like um, coconut that fall out from the tree, right. usually they're like dry. So um, they usually run the water through um, coconut filter. Shells, yeah. Not shells. Um, I don't know how to explain, like the inside of the coconut. Oh, like the meat of it. Not the meat. So um, dry coconuts, they're brown. And then like the outer shell before the coconut shell. Okay, I got it. Okay. Yeah. So it's it's like it's like the rind of it, um, the cover of so yeah, so the they husk. Would, yeah, the husk. And they would they would because it, it's it looks like shreds um, yes, when yes. it dries up. It, it's very fibrous. And I think now we started to see more filter that are being made um, mm -hmm. with that type of material. So it's definitely sustainable. Um, so they do use um, coconut filter yeah. and they would run the seawater through it so mm -hmm. that they can like get rid of the extra salt and then just use like the remaining water but we don't really have much coconuts here. So I don't know if that's a good idea, but so, it can also be an idea. 
So maybe think about, so the, the process is important if you're looking at desalination, right? Um, um, the evaporation process, and that takes time you mentioned. So there might be something there. Uh, we can apply heat. We can we can have some sort of device or create or design some sort of device that would heat up the water and then collect the the uh, evaporated residue, which is now then become fresh water, um, and then be able to separate that and transfer it. So. I can you know in my mind when you mentioned that the container would have like two separate compartment right um one would be after it's been evaporated and then the other one would be something that 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 would store salt water to start um so if you wanted to build a solution around that you can think about how you can improve the process behind something like this or rainwater reservoir or aqueducts. Um, and again, right, we, if, if you're looking at addressing the solution to the location, Jason had dropped in the map for the region, for the for Iraq, and then you can look at the region. Um, if you wanted to focus on helping the people that's locating near the university or in that area, or it could be just for us. Um, I think definitely for Southern California residents, um, water has always been a concern. We are very cautious about how much water we use. Um, you know, in our home, outside of our homes, there's always incentive for us to reduce water usage um, and not waste water because we always face shortage. This year has been, you know, we're thankful that we have more rainfall, but other years would be difficult. Okay, so Donnell dropped in some links. Um, let me click on the link. So kind of bring Yeah, one had to do uh, with the, the continuing that conversation around the coconut shell and what makes it uh, the best activated carbon. That was fascinating to find out. Thank you for that. Uh, <clears throat> um, and so it also got me looking at the, the biggest countries, at least the countries that export the most uh, Iraq is not on that list. <laughs> so I continue on looking for additional solutions. Um, and so one thing I, uh, that I didn't hear us talking about was extracting water from the atmosphere. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's something that, because I was thinking about rainwater, I was like, yeah, it doesn't seem like Iraq probably has a lot of rainwater. Um, so then I was thinking, well, well, okay, desalinization. So that needs, we need energy for that, right? Like we have to like, mm -hmm. uh, we can use some type of possibly even electrolysis to like, uh, break down that water, but it's still, everything's going to be, uh, go back to energy. Uh, so then uh, I was like, well, uh, where else could I find a resource that would contain water? And instead so I went to the air. So, mm -hmm. uh, so there are different ways that uh, you can extract water from air. This is uh, one random solution that I found online. Uh, they also have these nets that you can put up that will collect the uh, moisture out of air. Uh, and I can find some of those solutions if we're interested. Uh, but I just wanted to add on from, from the atmosphere perspective. So I've, I didn't share with you last time, but I talked to, you know, I was just sharing the, you know, this particular event with one of the faculty. Um, I don't know if you know Sarah, she teaches psychology. She's Iranian. Um, mm. She mentioned to me that she, is a good friend of a CEO who does water projects like this for different nation. And she told, she promised me that she would provide contact to him directly. She asked me if I wanted his cell phone number or um, his email address and, and, you know, and so forth. So I think we can definitely pursue this position, uh, this particular type of solution on a larger scale. Mm -hmm. um, if you wanted to team up with them, um, I did. She did send me a website, um, and then I will include that in the cover, uh, the the overview email today, um, about their facility and what they do. So they do help um, third world country um, or region in third world country with with water sources, mm -hmm. and they have huge um, filtration systems that they use. Um, and it's already been in place. It's funded by many different sources. 
Yeah. Um, so if we can come up with, uh, you know, out of the session this week and the next time, if we come up with solutions or at least start with building the solution for it, we can make a proposal to them and then uh, possibly establish a partnership with them. That way you can, you know, the students, um, me, everybody in the team can continue to work toward that and be able to provide assistance to other nation. I think that would be good. Anna? I'm sorry. Um, so other than Euphrates and Tigris, um, what sorts of water does um, Iraq is like more aiming towards? That's a good question. Um, I, don't think, I just yeah. searched up and then it says that their um, main source of um, water comes from um, Euphrates and Tigris and it's 98% of all their water. Okay. So, so, yeah. so we have to think about if we wanted to be able to assist for those region, we have to think about where the water is coming from. So that's a good mm -hmm. point. That's a good starting point. Thank you, Anna. Um, but I was just thinking real quick about how, what Donnell was saying about extracting water from the air. Um, what about drones, right? Like, are we, are we, are we able, cause drones are, mm -hmm. are easier to build. Um, and of course we can't fly them anywhere here in, in certain part of the world we, you know, for us, we have to, to be able to ask for permission, but, um, you know, so at the elevation, how far do you have to go in order to really pull um, and collect water in that sense? Will drone be small or too small for that type of environment? Um, so we can even look at options like that um, because building an aircraft, right, is possible, but at the same time, that would take a lot more resources, but we do have access to um, things that we can incorporate as a small drone and be able to, and, and have it more on either remote control or even automated. Um, we can program it to do specific things. I think so, that's a great idea because yeah. that, that literally takes like the original, right? The original way things were done. Like if you live far away from a water source, mm -hmm. what did you have to do? You had to walk there with an empty container, fill up right. that container, put it right on your head and walk it right back to your village. So if that's, if that's the same solution. You just put a drone on it, right? <laughs> now you got right. someone sitting there with their phone. <laughs> right. So yes, definitely can control it with an app. Um, mm -hmm. If it's small enough and it doesn't have to collect a huge amount of water each time, we can think about how much water it can collect, right? Mm -hmm. And then we, it can continue to go back and forth and then if it has an automated functionality, we, you know, the same route that it's gonna go. So we can have many different drones flying together um, or in, you know, in separate times to be able to collect that. And that kind of disengage the limitation in what we would see physically, like put things on wheel, making people walk the water to the village, like you said, um, or even, or even, you know, having to carry these heavy things where we can have the machine to do it for us. Um, and it doesn't have to be a big bulk of water each time. Um, what do you guys think about that? So. I was just thinking about the cost of that. Um, okay. Like when I was looking at that article um, and this is kind of old, it's 2004, I'm sure technology have changed, um, but it's just a high cost of, with this, um, take a look at the video. Take a look at the video in the chat of MIT uh, and how they extracted uh, drinkable water from the air. And that's 2020. Copy that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I don't I know. Also, like, yes. What, sorry. Like what Joe said, because I was thinking, if we do drones, um, like does the will we do it to, like the main cities of Iraq? And then would the main cities have drones? Because I was also reading, and it says that um, there's this place at South Iraq called um, Barsara, 
mm-hmm. and that's like they they all have like really polluted waters around them so water is very luxury but mm-hmm. with like smaller um because we're talking about the whole country and we can do drones but won't it be like some people get the water and someone won't get the water right so you're right because now it comes back to the same question that we started with which is accessibility right yeah um because oh i'm sorry go ahead no anna go oh because growing up um so palau is so i grew up in palau and palau is considered like a third world country kind of and growing up the leaders would get the resources that like the United States give us and they don't equally distribute them like they choose Mm -hmm. favorites so one state will get like most because that's where the leaders are from and one state won't so like leaning on this and I was thinking like if they do have drones so for example if Palau was in this situation and Palau do get the drones I don't think like some states who are not like the favorites or they don't think they need it won't go to them as quickly as like the first like the main country like the attentions are always on them so I was just thinking if stuff like that happens to like the other um like the other parts of Iraq would they get like the same resources because um they're not as much of like the main they're more like in the more poor area okay so I think uh you're you're right mentioning the location I think we should pick a location if you wanted to focus on building solution for the area that's needed that that needs this right and you mentioned that you found a city or a region that does that and yes in a lot of these um area sometime that you would have people like what Joseph was mentioning um, controlling the resources for political reasons um, for ownership for money and there's some corruption issues in how the resources are distributed Um, and even in some sense that water comes from natural resources for most part but the cost of you know bringing it to the community sometime would require um, external or third party intervention, right? Um, kind of contribution, I should say. Um, so with that, you know, that becomes, a, <clears throat> they become the authority figure or they have ownership over a certain area. So I think when we look at the solution, we can think about something that can bring people access and maybe that not all, everyone's going to have smartphones. Um, to be able to control drone and with drone <clears throat> you have to have battery power um, to be able to to have it mobile so how <clears throat> what kind of power do they have you know because in a very uh, small rural community they might not have electrical resources all the time right um, they might have ways to be able to use electricity but it won't be as regular um, because when I recall when I was growing up in some part of it um, was um, they limit power use there are times that they would turn off the power and you would go without power for even a day or two um, therefore that's why before there was not a lot of refrigeration um, in in different areas because it's just you won't ha- be able to power your refrigerator Um, or television or things like that but that was you know way back when it's different now however you know you have to think about the areas that don't have all the resources that we normally would have Um, you know so there you know out of this we can have so many different solutions Um, I think that you know as a group we can narrow down on a number of solutions that we want to address so that way it's it's the scope is small where we don't have to just keep on working, building like hundreds of different solutions, right? Um, we can probably select maybe five or even higher, uh, seven solutions and then be able to work toward that. 
So I have some people raising their hands. Um, so we'll go to Abraham and then Joe. Go ahead. Abraham. I just wanted to speak on like the area and why their water is getting more polluted. Okay. I know that theirs is partially political. So the main river that feeds into the Tigris and Euphrates um, is originates in Turkey. And Turkey has been building a lot of dams on the northern part of the main river that feeds into those two. That is why the water levels are going down because Turkey has dams on it, which increases mm -hmm. the parts, the, you know, the particles in the water that are bad for us. So normally the way that works is that the more water you have, even if there's pollutants in the water, they'll be diluted to the point that it's safe enough for consumption. But because of those dams that Turkey has been building that leads from the main feeder river, the water levels are getting increasingly higher. So the pH and the PP particles per inch are also going up. Um, so I know that that's one of the main um, like in Mosul and Ebrea, where the university is located, that's where okay. the, the main river leads into. Okay. So, um, any suggestion, Joe? Did you wanted to add something else to that? Well, I was just looking at what Donnell has shared, and okay. it doesn't look like that's sustainable, uh, especially compared to the region. Okay. Um, and I think we could like take that idea and make it sustainable. Uh, when I was looking at like what they were using, using zeolite. Um, right. And is that like accessible to all or to many? And you know, we're speaking with MIT, like one of the top engineering schools in the, in the world. Um, and so they have access to things that like most people don't. And so maybe if we could take their ideas and flip it on his head um, and use things such as like what Anna was talking about with the coconut. Um, maybe that could be a, a lot more sustainable than trying to outsource zeolite um, and incorporate that into the filters. Um, I know they're probably using or making more iterations, but it's just based on like their studies um, and their um, write up. Um, that was like one of the main things they use as far as for filtering uh, that water. And so it just comes back into, is this sustainable or not? Um, Wait, didn't they build it with, a, with solar? No, no, no. Well, they're using filters. And so they, they're using a, the power of solar, but they have filters, like three levels of filters in between that. And um, they're, they're, what they're doing to harvest that is using commercial zeolite for filtering. Uh, so you're saying use the coconut filter instead? Yes, uh, something that's more sustainable mm -hmm. and easy, easily accessible. Um, I've seen in one region, um, uh, a region after I can't remember the exact place, but this guy, he's a multimillionaire um, because he has harnessed coconuts and his the way that he processes it, he turns it into charcoal. On the um, beaches in Africa somewhere, right? Yes, I think I shared the video with you at one time. Yeah, so so and and people are throwing away coconuts as if uh <laughs> it's a, it's air. They just breathing it out, and so he has harnessed that something that's heavily uh, attainable and just use it and turn it into charcoal. And so if we could just harness that, if he could turn char, I mean yeah, charcoal, I mean coconuts into charcoal. I'm sure we could find a way to filter out uh, the rainwater. Okay, and let's go back to Abraham's points about dams and, and river um, that's being built. Um, and then think about, because with dams, you have power, right? But how is that power source being distributed? So if you require energy to be able to, to do the filtration or to, you know, for drones or whatnot, um, you know, so we're, we might be looking at, okay, uh, is there additional sources that we can power? Joe, did you want to raise your hand? Did you raise your hand again? Or do you want to share? Or that was I just- think, I think I lowered Zoom. my hand. Oh, okay. Yeah, Zoom just <laughs> notified me all late. Um, anyone else want to add? Okay, so, so, so I think I got some, um, 
some feedback about you want to focus on Averill or Arvill um, as the region. Um, is there other regions that you want to focus your solution on with, before we start putting together like statements? Um, mm -hmm. I know that the Basra at Southern Tip was uh, one of the most like economically powerful cities, but because of the water shortage and other reasons, they're struggling right now. So that might be another area right at the mouth of the where the Tigers and Euphrates meet. Okay. Okay, so I like that. I like that we look at two locations um, or we can focus on one area, like you mentioned, that is highly needing that because they just don't have the economic development resources to, to you know, possibly expand on certain solutions of their own. Um, other suggestions? Anything for us? <laughs> that way we can test. So there might be, you know, so we can do like one for California or somewhere in the United States. Because if you look at Houston, Texas, what happened recently, right? Even in Houston, where there's rainfall a lot, right? All the time. There's, um, but People just didn't have water for days and even a week. No power, no water because they had a storm and it just, everything went into a halt. So, um, you know, people were drinking water out of, uh, you know, uh, for, for a pool. I know my family was. Um, some of my cousins, they mentioned that they only had like one small bottle that they originally had as spared. And, they had to make it last for a day. So, um, you know, because we're in the United States, it doesn't mean that it couldn't happen to us, right? So you have to think about in the case of emergency, maybe think about that. How can we extract or, you know, manage our water sources in the case of emergency, in the case where we, we can't have, we have, there's water shut down. Um, there's not, water coming to our home. Is there a tool, a kit, something that we can build to be able for us to just um, obtain water or be able to locate water at least? Um, I previously bought a kit for hiking, like for emergency where it comes with, you know, um, container filtration system and then chemical where you can put into the water and you know, you shake it and then, you know, you can turn dirty lake water into drinkable water in minutes. Um, and, <clears throat> you know, it helps you last in the case where, you know, if you find like really muddy water and you have to, ha you have to have a drink of a water. So um, maybe think about, we can design a kit or something like that, um, if you like, okay. Wow, Any this other? is really getting me uh, thinking because now I'm like, <laughs> like, now I'm like, wait, how do I get it? Then I'm like, how do I store it? Uh -huh. And then like, if I store it, how, you know, how long is that fresh? And then when I do like use it, do I have to reclean it? Then how do I, you know, so it's a lot of, so thank you for this. This is yeah, no problem because I, I really think that we don't like mm -hmm. even for, for us here in California, right? Like mm -hmm. we don't think about emergency cases, but we yeah. face earthquake all the time. Right. Um, and when earthquake happens, you know what happens. Power is going to get shut off mm -hmm. and water is going to get shut off. Gas is going to get shut off. So if we, if, and there's not like it, even with all the emergency kits that you see, people sell container for water that you can store, right? Um, storing it for how long you can't leave it in the sun. So you have to store it indoor. Um, but is there a way that you can, you know, be able to locate water or, or um, you know, maybe a, a kit where you can store water for a long time and maintain it. Like um, how you would maintain something like outdoor pool or, um, you know, things like that. So maybe, you know, we can, we can stumble on something right now and we can definitely build something and make money out of it, <laughs> commercialize it or even donate it, right? Um, for the bigger picture is that we want to help the community and the people. So 
what I'm getting is that you wanted to focus on two areas in, in Iraq. Um, you want to possibly think about different solutions outside of just filtering. That's great. Um, that opened up the conversation. So what I like to do next, I think we have a little bit of time. Let me stop share here. I just wanna make sure that I address everything that they asked me to do um, because I have to report out um, on the 2nd of April. Okay. Let's see, we, okay, so, um, for the, I guess in the next 30 minutes, we can expand on our ideas, okay? So what we can do is we can put together some areas that we wanted to address our solutions on, and then we wanted to be able to um, put together some problem statement, okay? So the questions that they, they, um, they are having us answer is, who's gonna be your customer or people that want to contribute or participate in this? So if, let's say if you're designing some kind of filter system or irrigation system, or, you know, ways to extract the water, who's gonna be your target audience, okay? Um, and let's think about the accessibility of those groups, okay? Um, is, is there a certain requirement for, for them to use this type of solution? Okay, so your audience is gonna be important or your customer base, that's what it says on my sheet, but I think we're just gonna say audience because um, this doesn't have to be commercialized or monetized. Um, and then what kind of need do they have? Okay, why is this need important? So I'll post these questions in the chat so you can think about that. Um, and then what we'll do next is, let's think about the resources for the iMake Innovation Center. Okay, what can we use from iMake Innovation Center to contribute to your solution? Okay, because this is the resource at hand, right? Um, we mentioned that we can 3D print some things. We have laser cutter, we have things at the iMake Innovation Center, we have micro boards. Um, so we should look at the resources at hand and be able to adapt the resources for our solutions, okay? So any suggestion or feedback on this? Nothing? <laughs> okay, all right, Joe had to go. Okay, that's fine. Um, so since Abraham brought up the location I think I will charge you with that area since you know it very well. <laughs> okay, so I'll let you lead the group for your group um, in, in that. And then um, what I'll do is let's say that we're gonna, we're gonna create rooms. I will have you work. You can join each of the room of your choice. Um, so with Abraham, He's gonna focus on a certain area. Yes, Abraham. Uh, no, I'm sorry. I, I just, I heard my name, but facilities was in here fixing something. So I didn't know if you uh, said something. Okay. Yeah, I was just gonna, I was just saying that maybe um, because you mentioned that you know about the region and um, you might have some, some suggestions. So I was gonna have you lead the group your group, you know, for the people who want to address that location. Um, and then what we'll do is we, we're going to create, you know, smaller other groups where you can focus on. So who wants to do um, 
filtration or irrigation or desalination, um, let me know right now. So that way I can, we can put together small groups and we can start writing down our problem statement. Nothing. Just like my students, <laughs> when it comes down to answer question, crickets. <laughs> okay. So I think NK and Cynthia brought up some great, great ideas. So if you guys don't mind, I will have you, you know, um, I guess share some stuff with your group and then you can decide together. Um, so what I'm gonna do is, and then also Donnell has really great ideas. So let's see. Casey, do we wanna go back into the teams that where we did the mural mapping and then add any new people? Yeah, let's do that. Um, but I was gonna, I was, and then uh, what I'll do is I'll put together a Google Doc. I'll share a link with everyone, right? I'll pop into the, the groups and then um, I'll be able to um, put together a document for the global solutions people that way. Okay, so let me, let me reshare the Miro. Okay, so. This is team two. And then I will put team one. It was in the chat earlier, but I wasn't sure if all of you saw it. Okay. And you're welcome to add more to it and you can branch out and be able to um, set up some information or details that you wanted to address. And then together as a group, we can probably decide on what you finalize with as far as what your solutions would address, okay? Let me see, I know I tweaked something on my, any other suggestions or anything, that, any feedback? So you want us in two breakout rooms? Like yeah, so I, yeah, I'm, okay. I, I'm gonna put three breakout rooms, okay? And then um, I'll, oh, three. I'll let you join manually, let me see. It's not letting me. Okay, so let me just, uh, oh, let's do two. Okay, all right, bye Donnell, thank you. Yes. Okay, so I'll, I'll set up two rooms and then you can, um, you can, let's see, I allow participants. Okay. So we can have some of the same people. And then I know there's quite a few new people here that weren't here last time. Um, Abraham, were you in the group with, with me and Jerry and Patrick and Cynthia? I can't remember. Um, I have no idea. <laughs> I, oh, I, that, every time, yes, he every was. time um, I need to know what team I'm on. I don't know. That's okay. I mean, I'm just gonna have it reassigned. And then if you don't like the room that you're in, you can always jump into the other room, right? Okay. Um, yeah, so let me see, let me change that to allow participants to return, move all participants to breakout rooms automatically. Um, okay, and then I'll just assign it automatically so it's fast. All right. Okay. So now I'm gonna open the room. And if you don't like where you're what you're in, then you can always change. Okay. Okay, here we go.
Oh, sorry, some of you are returning already. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna close out some of the other room to bring back the other group and then um, we'll talk about what we're gonna do next week and then we'll end. Yay. How is everything with you? Have you been all right? Oh yeah, I, you know, um, hanging in there. My dog's condition is worsened, so um, you know it's it's hard. But yeah, we're gonna come back on campus in the fall, so gonna make some adjustment. <laughs> we're doing all the plans to reopen for September. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's gonna be quite busy in the fall, but um, we're gonna transition some back in the summer, so. Um, I'm teaching a non-credit Arduino Raspberry Pi class, so I got to touch base with you and Joe. Okay, I think everybody is mostly back. Um, before we say farewell for this week, right, um, we will pick up where we left off last time, and then um, we will continue the process in the next one um, where we, we can share out together as a group as well and do some activity. Um, but I'm going to meet with Global Solutions um, you know, right after we meet in the next, uh, I think on Friday is when our meeting to kind of share out on what kind of solutions or problem statement that you come up with and so on. Okay. So if you have some research that you need to do, if you have some spare time, you can do that. Um, or we can utilize some of the time next week in order to put everything together. Okay. Thank you so much for a great session. Omar, do you want to say anything or share anything? Actually, uh, I'm sorry for joining late and also sorry for your grandmother uh, oh, and okay. about irrigation and filtration, both are important for my region. Okay. As you know, uh, we supply by running water one and a half hour every 48 hours. Oh. So what do we have to do? We yes. have to put to put big tanks to store water and use for other days. And also during during winter in the rainy days, the water becomes slug. And there is a huge amount of mud comes with water. Every three, four, four months, we have to clean the tank because there is a huge amount of mud at the bottom of the tank. So using filters is very important for me at home. So is, is the tank for your home or is it for uh, to share with your neighbors as well? No, it's just for my house, for my home. Okay, okay. So everybody has their own in each home. Yes, yeah. Okay. So that's good to know because in the next one, we, we got to talk about that and maybe think of solutions to help that. Thank you yeah. so much. Yeah. And how big is the tank? Uh, about uh, 100 liters. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And you and said an hour, yeah. an hour and a half each day yeah. that, that you're able to get water? Okay. All right, thank you so much for sharing. We appreciate that because you know, without that knowledge, we, we're still gonna have to dig out some information, but thank you so much. So that's thank team for, one and yeah. So they will work. Much. Thank you. Thank you. For Anything else anybody wanted to add? Okay. So thank you so much for joining today. I'll put together a little email to wrap, you know, to give everybody a summary and then I'll upload the video. Um, and if you have any questions or anything, please let me know and you can communicate with me via email. Have a good, wonderful day or Thanks, see Casey. you next week. Bye. We'll see you next Thursday. Yeah. Bye. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye, everyone.